Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Continual, the online con that never ends. I'm Jeannie Adams, and I'm your host tonight for a wonderful panel on journaling for the new year and the new you. And I'm going to let my guests tonight introduce themselves, starting with Katherine Anderson. Hi, I'm Katherine Anderson. I am a writer based in Delaware. Donna? Hi, I'm Donna Gulick. Donna Spring Gulick, and um, I've been a spiritual counselor, but also a writer. And um, I'm currently working on a memoir of such experiences, which is called Mystic in a Minivan. Sophia. Hi, I'm uh, dialing in from Maryland, and I am a writer published by HarperCollins and other publishers around, publishers around the world. And I'm currently working on a women's fiction based during World War II. Cool. Well, I wanted to get started tonight with you, Donna, especially because I first started journaling seriously in a class you taught about journaling. And why don't you talk a little bit about why you feel journaling can really help creatives, especially in this current time where we're all sort of in our homes a lot and in our heads even more. Thank you, Jeannie. Um, yeah, that was called Write From Your Soul, W-R-I-T-E, I believe. Um, it was a long time ago. How do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it popped into my head earlier today. Um, to me, it, the doing any kind of journal, whether it is a journal with a certain purpose or whether you're doing morning pages, a la Julia Cameron, or whether you're doing some other version that's like, a thankfulness journal. What it does is it opens that road in from the right brain and the subconscious so that you begin, I, I think, I begin anyway, to open these springs that I might normally not have open. Little freshwater springs that pop up that then have a turn of phrase that I might use later or just have an opening that then allows that bridge from the right left brain to not just think of what I need to do today, but to really get into the creativity of life. You mentioned Julia Cameron and, and Sophia, I know you and I both uh, were fans of Julia Cameron's Artist Way and doing her artist dates. Did you start journaling with morning pages or were you journaling before that came along? I think, you know, I flirted with the idea of keeping a diary throughout my life. And so I would do it kind of one year I'd do it and next year I wouldn't. But yes, um, doing the artist way taught me how brilliant the idea of doing morning pages, which is basically you first thing when you get up, you can grab a cup of coffee. But before you have anything cloud your brain, you sit down and you write at least three pages and it, there's no rhyme or reason. It can be anything. It can be a dream. It can be a list of groceries. It can be whatever you want it to be. But what I have found looking back, reading some of them is that they're, they're quite interesting and brilliant in a lot of ways, because like I said, they're unclouded by judgment and you're the only person who's going to see them. And so they're very freeing. So I've always loved it. Well, that brings up, uh, you know, writing the, just writing first thing in the morning. I know, Catherine, you talked about the fact that you've been a journaler all your life. Do you have a specific time that you do it or do you just freeform during the day? So that all changed. So um, I, for all those years that I was going to my corporate jobs in the morning, I was running around and rushing out the door with my coffee to go to work. So I would write at night usually when I got home, often to process whatever had happened that day. Sometimes I, I still have scads of my old, I have all my old journals. I started writing diaries when I was like 12. Um, and I turned them into journals when I was in college with dreams, aspirations, thoughts of the day, whatever was coming up. Uh, for many years when I was working, I really did use them to process whatever had been through that day. Um, and sometimes though, it's also just fun stuff. Uh, more recently, I rediscovered the idea of writing in the morning is a tremendous one. Um, someone talked to me about morning pages a few years ago and I, I read the Julia Cameron book a long time ago. 
Um, but I think, and I went back and picked it up recently, and I think there are things about it that have helped me rediscover myself. Because after 25 years doing corporate work and, and being very successful at it, when I stepped away, I had shoehorned myself into jobs I didn't always love, but they were good jobs. And so I did them. Um, but this gave me a chance to step back and go, okay, who am I really? Am I this person or that person? And it's been a very interesting journey. For me, it, <clears throat> I did start, as I said, after I had taken Donna's class and um, I hadn't found Julia Cameron yet. And so for me, journaling was like you say, Catherine, a lot of it was processing because mm -hmm. I was going through a challenging time. And for me, you know, some days there would be three pages and some days there would be 30. <laughs> it just depended on what hit me that day, but I could never, I am not a morning person, so I could never do it as successfully in the morning. And I, I know everybody had the, uh, you know, both Julia Cameron and a lot of other people say, you should, before things clutter up your mind, you should meditate in the morning, you should journal in the morning. It doesn't work for me, it just doesn't work for me. I sit there with the blank page and I'm like, I don't got time for this. <laughs> and, and so I usually do it at night and before I go to bed and, sometimes that does for me what Catherine talks about processing the day and processing what's going on and sometimes it is just as creative as writing work that I've done that day and helping me make sure that I catch that turn of phrase like you said Donna um, and making sure that those ideas get captured now I don't know about y'all but I tend to use a blank book for a journal a lot of people use line pages I use a blank book because I draw a lot <laughs> and it becomes you know doodle pad and and idea sketches and things like that. Um, but that that's just what works for me. How, what do you use, Donna? Do you use the computer? Do you use lined the... pages because I can't draw a thing aside of the back end of an elephant by rote my father taught me. <laughs> <laughs> so I use lined pages um, and I like it big. I write big, I'm an extrovert and so I like it big enough that I have room to write. When friends give me small journals, they end up as list makers, not journals. Um, and <laughs> and I, I'll bet like all writers, somebody always is giving you some sort of <laughs> notebook or journal. Or <laughs> and I rarely get to the very last pages of a journal. I write in it until it's maybe two thirds full and I'm tired of the cover and I don't want that journal anymore. And I'm so excited <laughs> about getting a new journal. <laughs> so wasteful as that may be, it gives me that new adventure feeling instead of I'm writing in this again. That's so cool. And what about you, Sophia? If I'm a day, I'm somebody that has to have breakfast before I can do much of anything or my blood sugar is gonna dive down and I'm gonna stare at a blank page or be really grumpy. So, <laughs> yeah, that's when you start writing things like, I really need to eat now. I really need to eat now. <laughs> and I am fantasizing and you start eating yeah. foods. <laughs> <laughs> what do you use, Sophia? Uh, I'm, I just use a regular lined notebook and I, I keep it by my bed. And I also use it for that middle of the night waking up where you've got an idea and you don't want to forget it because you know you will if you go back to sleep. Oh yeah. And so I just open literally any page. I don't even turn on the light and I just write, you know, one or two words to try and bring me back there. But then in the morning, I'll, I'll try and do a few pages, but I don't do it every morning. I, it would be a, I'm better. And I find I'm more productive if I do do it every morning. Yeah, I, <laughs> I sometimes do those middle of the night things and I don't general, I usually keep a pad of paper by my, my bed rather than my journal because I'm kind of a purist and I don't, if I don't turn on the light or put on my glasses, it looks like a drunk goat. <laughs> well, that's what, that's what it looks like all the time. <laughs> so because I'm a purist, I don't want that in my journal. So it's fine on the yellow page, but then I go back and write it in the journal as an idea. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense. Sometimes I look at those notes that I've written in the middle of the night and I think, why did I think that was so great? <laughs> sometimes it does, sometimes it, it doesn't. <laughs> it never, for me, it never does. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, but yeah. it's kind of fun to look back on it. 
Well, sometimes I think it's, there's a nugget of an idea in there that whatever you wrote down didn't necessarily work, but it, there's something about it that does work or brings you to something else. I will say I did wake up in the middle of the night one time and came downstairs and sat at the kitchen table and wrote the entire opening scene to a book that I ended up publishing. But it was, it's actually not the opening scene. It's the, it's like the secondary scene because the, uh, the, it's, the, it's a funeral scene. And I woke up with the full blown scene in my head, went downstairs and wrote it down. If I had tried to write that in the middle of the night, drunk. No way. <laughs> I have had dreams where they come to me and when I wake up in the morning, I will sit down and try to write down everything about it because a couple of them, these particular dreams I'm thinking about, I'm like, that's a great story idea. And I would just start writing as much as I could remember to, to, to get it down because then it goes. Yeah. What kind of journal do you use, Catherine? Um, I use lined journals. Um, they vary from those essay books that you get in college. That's what I used for many years because they were cheap and I have <laughs> stacks of them um, to, to fancier books that, you know, like leather with pages. They're about this size though, uh, most of the time. Um, so not huge, not, not a notebook size, but I write in them. I draw pictures. I paste things in that I want to remember, whether it's, um, um, all sorts of things, playbills, obituaries, wedding announcements for, for friends, people that I know. Um, just not, I know, well, I wouldn't have thought you would put random ones in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, obituaries are kind of interesting. You could, you know, a really well lived life is an interesting thing. But, uh, but no, it's usually personal things that I really want, or concert tickets back when we had paper tickets or. Um, stuff this like is that. A, a scrapbook journal. <laughs> it, it is kind of, it, it varies. Sometimes it's all my dreams. Sometimes it's my memories. Sometimes yeah. it's serve, uh, serves a variety of purposes. That's great. Yeah. Well, Sophia, I know you said you didn't do it every day and I, I'm the same way. Sometimes I'll journal every day for months and obviously we're processing something and then I'll go months without journaling. And then I sort of feel like I feel guilty. So I feel like I have to sort of catch myself up in the journal. Well, here's all the stuff that happened in the last four months that I didn't write down. <laughs> yeah, that's what now for the real stuff I want to write about. Yeah, that's when it starts to feel like a chore rather than something you're really enjoying, though, I think. Right. right. I, um, I switched for a decade or so to an electronic journal. And I discovered I actually like the paper better because on the electronic one, I always want to go back and change things, revise things, make it longer. <laughs> and, and, and that's great if I'm writing essays or blog posts or something, but, but just to write freehand, whatever you're thinking, it's still better on paper. And I can't go back and edit it easily, which is a good thing for me. <laughs> probably, probably a good thing. Yeah. And Nani, you've been teaching about journaling for years. What, what are some things that you would advise somebody who's maybe picking this up for the first time because they are stuck at home and they need a way to process the fact that they're stuck at home? What are some things you would suggest someone do? Well, I just came across, actually my husband came across um, yesterday, a site called gratitude.org. Oh um, hmm. And it has all kinds of beautiful ways. There's like a prompt, a number of prompts every day that get you to look at things, but in a positive, helpful way, but not a Pollyanna way. So one of the things would be find something like that or Rick Hansen or uh, Pema Chodron or any of the sort of take you deeper kinds of authors and teachers mm -hmm. and take just a prompt they give, a sentence that comes out, and just start writing from that, what your feeling is, what you're, what that takes you to. Oh, and that reminds me of this, and you put in a memory. Another, these are many possibilities. I like having many ways, and I'm not a person who stays with doing it every day, I'm not a person who stays with a consistent, this is how I always do it. That would drive me crazy. I have to constantly change it up. So other ways I might suggest, are Julia Cameron's idea of the morning pages is you just start writing. So you might write, I have no idea what to write and I hate this and I can't believe I'm doing it. <laughs> and then a word might come up out of this like hate. Well, I don't know if I hate. Well, sometimes I hate. 
well, yes, I hate Brussels sprouts. Well, you know, and then that takes you in a whole different tack. And then that takes you somewhere else, which may end up as an extremely creative idea or a humorous piece you write that you send out to everybody because we all need humor right now in this very interesting time we're in. It also <laughs> might be breakthroughs because it gets past the logical mind, it gets past, so there is no room for self-criticism. It's stream of consciousness writing, which is not what we're supposed to do when we're gonna publish it. Right. right. I mean, there've been authors known for it, but that wouldn't go today. Um, <laughs> James Joyce would not go today. No, it really wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, and this is the artist way is one of the things we've been it talking is. about. This is my well thumbed uh, copy of it, but it also has journal prompts in both in the end of each chapter and at the back. Uh, another one you you taught me about uh, Donna is uh, Natalie Goldberg. Yes, she yes. Uh, she has all sorts. Of, if you are a writer, she has all sorts of writing prompts. Just and she recommends journaling because she talks about unhinging your brain, like you said, Donna, getting from the out of the right brain, left brain thing so that you're sort of in more creative space. And some of her prompts are really off the wall. Yes. Uh, very science fiction fantasy kind of things. Some of her prompts are describe how you would unbolt something from the wall if you was the first time you'd ever seen a wrench. It's like, oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but they, those were very helpful to me. What are some that you found helpful, Sophia? Um, do, you, do you use so, prompts so, at all? So there is one thing I do, and it's probably out of all the years of journalism, uh, journaling, the most uh, useful is that I always start with describing where I am in detail and also the season because I have, I, as a writer, as all of us are, if you're writing a scene and let's say it is the dead of winter when you're writing the scene and the scene is in hot August and yeah, you can describe it. We can all describe it, but going back to my journal and flipping through the pages where I've, I've described July, August, whatever, um, I usually get a more authentic reading um, and description. So it's one of, it's probably the number one thing I use the journal for. That's a great um, idea. Amazing. Yeah, that, so I've done that. And then the other thing I do is if I get stumped when I'm writing a story, um, I, instead of opening another file, I will pick up the journal and I, because for some reason, writing it in a journal that is entirely private that I know no one's ever gonna see, there's something much more freeing about it. And I'll do a character sketch uh, as we've all done before, you know, where was she born? Let's say it's a woman, where was she born? What time of year, how many brothers and sisters, what major events, all the things that we go into in character building. And for some reason, if I write it, in the journal, it's different than if I type it into a file into the computer. So that's the other thing I use it for when I'm doing storytelling. Well, it activates a different part of your brain. I yeah. have a very a wonderful author friend of mine who switched from writing her stories on the computer to writing them longhand and then reading them into the computer via Dragon, naturally speaking, mm -hmm. because she got stuck she got writer's block and she decided to try it somebody suggested she decided to try it to see if it would get her unblocked because she was on deadline and on contract and she just thought it was magnificent it just made all the difference in the world and she felt like it made her more creative because she was writing longhand and something about the action of the pen and you know so she uh she has found that to be similar to what you're talking about Sophia is something that really helps her write Right. What about you, Catherine? What are some things you've used? In terms of writing prompts? Yeah. Do you use them? Do you recommend them? So often when I'm doing them, it's it's something I've seen in the newspaper or because I may, I'm not necessarily writing for sometimes I'm writing in the morning, but I might have looked at a newspaper. I guess that's cheating. But no, it isn't. <laughs> no such no such thing as cheating. 
No such but, thing as cheating. <laughs> if I have, if I have um, just things I want to talk about, I'll just write them or uh, horoscopes are, uh, I love horoscopes. Um, and so sometimes I like writing about them. That sounds kind of different maybe, but I just do. Um, and uh, I have um, a deck of cards that's actually conversation starters, but, um, but they can actually work for just writing prompts too. So since I live alone, all my conversations are with the paper and the dog. <laughs> Uh, I, there are several um, like card decks and things like that that I've used for that purpose too. And then for me, I found actually found some interesting writing prompts on Pinterest. Now, oh, some yeah. of them are way off the wall and some of them are so simple that at the stage where I am and as a writer, they don't serve me. But I'm sure that for someone who's beginning a journaling process, it would serve them to, to start with journal prompts like that. Um, I don't generally have any problem sitting down with my with my family life and all those sorts of things. I, I got lots to stay. <laughs> you know, I've been thinking a lot about certain things that I might have tweeted at one time. Um, it's much more fun just to write about it in a journal and maybe just keep it to myself. Uh, <laughs> I can be frank and nobody comes back and, and trolls me. So um, there's that too. That's a great idea. I should probably exercise that option <laughs> slightly more than I do. It, it helps sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, especially when you really need to vent more than 100 and 240 characters. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Donna, what are some other resources you would recommend for anybody who wants to get started? Now, I know for myself, I had to try several different types of journals. Like you said, some people have, can do the small ones and some people like a loose leaf notebook. Some people like, you know, it's got to be leather bound and beautiful. And I'm always afraid to write in those and I don't write in them. And I finally <laughs> discovered after I had like five of them that I would never write in them. You're so, saving you know, them for good, right? Exactly, exactly. So I always end up with these artist notebooks that are blank pages and, you know, I can, because I like Donna said, I'm an extrovert and I write big. And, you know. <laughs> then if I want to just write on one entire page, I hate this day. Right, you can do that. <laughs> so what are, what are some other ideas that you have, Donna? Well, another one that um, I have enjoyed and I actually got it from a, a writing idea. I write nonfiction, creative nonfiction and poetry, um, but I got it from novelists, the idea, and I don't remember which thing I was reading, but to take, let's say you're angry at somebody else or you're annoyed, you're frustrated, whatever, um, and, and it could be about anything, a national figure or somebody that walked into your life or the tech support on the phone. It doesn't matter. You become both roles as if you're gestalting it. And so it's, a re it's really fun to write a journal as if you're writing a play or a screenplay and you're putting down, you know, that you are and you, you just list the characters and you can even do the scene in between you know, like you're telling the director how to work this. But what you end up doing is you're putting yourself in the other person's shoes and your own. And it's amazing how it evolves. And who are you really mad at? What is it you're really furious about or annoyed with or sad about that you're covering up with the anger? But you're not doing a whole psychological process. You're just writing this play, being both characters. What a cool idea. It's, yeah. it's fun. It's fun. And for those of you that are novelists, could even come up with, you know, some part of a novel later. I can see myself doing that and then completely forgetting why I was writing it. <laughs> hours, <laughs> hours, hours later, I'm like, well, that was worth that was two hours I didn't have. <laughs> what are some things that have helped you keep journaling, Sophia, or get back to it when you decide you want to and have had a long absence? I'm embarrassed to say it's where I glance at my journal and went, oh, wow, yeah, there's the journal. I better start writing. <laughs> but, um, Me too. No, but there, was, there was one other thing I was going to add. Um, the, the, the journaling process, um, 
there's something else to be gained aside from helping your writing, I think. And that is, and this comes from the artist's way. And Jeannie, you and I talked about it the, the time we did that chapter. And it was about the power of writing something down. Yes. And so we all, for example, we all have these hopes and dreams and goals and things that we want in our life. But I will never forget the very first time I did the artist's way uh, 20 years ago, I wanted to start writing. I had never written a book or anything. And I, there's a chapter that talks about write your, I think it's 20 goals. And they said, you know, write practical goals. And then at the end, usually no one can come up with 20. And so you write really fantastical goals. And I remember that it said things, you know, I, I, I wrote down things like I want to live in France, uh, you know, spend vast quantities of time in France. I want to write a book. I want to see it published. I want to, you know, on and on and on. And I, you know, I wanted certain things and I wanted to achieve certain things. So it was practical, it was ethereal. And I found that list uh, about a decade after I wrote it. And the most shocking thing was out of 20 goals, I had probably accomplished at least 10. And, but it was shocking to me. And so when Jeannie and I did it together, um, I made up a new list and I thought, well, you know, I never thought I'd accomplish all these goals. So I better really reach high. So I think my last two goals are win a, an Oscar and win a Pulitzer Prize. And, you know, it sounds crazy, but if you don't say it and if you don't write it down, if you don't, if you just say to yourself, well, that's impossible, well, then it is impossible. So it's right. the power of writing things down. Absolutely. You were going to add something, Catherine, I saw you. No, I just said, right. I mean, I, I think <laughs> you're absolutely right that, right, well, <clears throat> power of writing things down for me is just tremendous because it's helped me unlock like I said who I am now as opposed to who I was before and all of that started with just writing it all down right um what do I want and I had goals I it's hilarious to look at the goals that I wrote when I was 25 or 21 but um I was going to get a lot done by the time I was 27 and there was a yacht involved. None of that happened, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but a whole different set of things happened and it was marvelous. So, but it is kind of interesting to look at those things that you think you're going to do. I What's highly that? recommend what Sophia said of, especially as there's a, a time like a new moon, beginning of a year, any of those kind of opening times, a solstice and equinox, even after an eclipse, um, take a bit of time to say, what are my visions? What are my goals? What do I want? I'm turning 75 Thursday. And it's like, well, gee, wow. what do I want for the last, whoever knows, but my parents both lived into their late nineties, so, you know, forever, how many years, what do I want out of that? What do I want to give? How do I want to serve? Um, how do I, what, what would I like to accomplish? And what would I like to learn you know, like how to be more still, how to find the quieter part of me and not run away from her as much. So personal goals of that kind that are about personal growth, but also the big ones like you were talking about, Sophia. It's amazing once we write them down and then possibly journal on some of those as we go along. Not I'm not worried about whether I do it every day. Like one of you said, if I see the journal sitting there, I say, oh, I want to write in that. <laughs> Must be time to write in it again. But then to look at those and say, wow, I'm going to look at that one and maybe journal on it and see where it takes me. You know, there was a study. I, it, uh, I took a lot of self-help, you know, and, and success courses when I was in the corporate world. And uh, there was a study that was done that a Harvard class, I think it was a 69 or 70, and that would be 1969 or 1970. <laughs> and they checked in with them 30 years later. But this, what the study did was the, they took the top like 100 people in the class and they had some of the, they had those 100 people write down their goals. Those 100 people at the end of the study period, which was like I said, 20 or 30 years later, 
they made collectively more money than the entire rest of the class combined. Wow. And they attributed it to the fact that these people had written goals and they, they, they talked about, and they've done studies about it <clears throat> since that writing it down puts it out there in the universe. And I'm, I'm a little more in, the, in that esoteric realm. Hey, I'm a writer. That if you write it down and you say it out loud, it's about saying it out, you know, to yourself and to the universe. It, it puts it out there. And hey, I I'm, I want the ride on the yacht, man. <laughs> my list, my list as as uh, Sophia and, and well, actually, all three of you probably know includes action figures. So <laughs> you know, and that that's what another one of those success coach coaches likes to say. He says, write down the first, you know, twenty or twenty five, and then you need to write ten. What he calls Big, hairy, audacious goals, BHAGs. I mean, to write BHAGs, which there's, that's where my, my Oscar and action figures sit on the BHAG role. But, you know, if I don't write it down, I won't aim for it. So mm -hmm. that's right. And I love what you said, Donna. That's probably a great writing prompt sometime because one of the other mm -hmm. folks that I like to read and talk and, and, and look at is, they say sometimes it's the essence of what you're looking for, not that specific thing. What does right. that represent to you? And you know, sometimes right. in journaling, I've discovered that what does it represent to me is more important than the actual like thing thing. Is. Agreed, completely. And I had, but I had not thought about taking those twenty and journaling about them. So that's that's a great thing to think about too. So what are some things that y'all do with journals that you don't think other people do? Things that you think are unique that, that you might give as a thing someone would could do. Catherine, is there anything you can think of that? I mean, obviously you kind of use yours as a scrapbook too. That's pretty I, cool. I use them well and, and people do travel journals, but I don't do separate travel journals. I just take whatever journal I'm in and I just pulled out one from this one particular year when a lot happened in my life that included a lot of travel, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. But it's it's also for memories. Um, so the scrapbooking thing comes up again. But uh, um, that's probably the thing that I've done the most. I've been thinking about if I want to scan them and save them as PDFs, but I still kind of like having the paper form. So. Yeah. Um, I am, um, it's a poetry technique actually but you start with a felt sense. And so you start with, you know, I feel tightness in my stomach or something. You start with something that you're perceiving in your body at that moment. You know, it feels like a rubber band stretch between my temples. And then you see where that takes you. So it takes you from your body, perhaps to the lamp in the room, perhaps to, but you stay for in the very beginning with just the physical things happening. And out of that becomes a poem, a few sentences, or an entire paragraph of what it would feel like to sit in a teacup or some equally out there thing. <laughs> How cool. <laughs> so that's something I don't think most people do, but having taken a few classes in poetry and written poetry since I was fourth grade or younger, um, that's, a, that's a fun way to start in a journal that I don't think is common. And another fun thing to do comes from dream interpretation. Um, and one of those is to take each part of a dream and become it. So if it had a white picket fence in the dream, I am the white picket fence. What is my purpose? Oh, well, I'm here as a decoration or no, I'm here to keep the dog in or what? And then, you know, there were roses growing by it. Well, what color were they? Okay, what did that become? So I am the roses and, and you personify each part of what was in a dream. It's actually a dream analysis technique, but it's really fun as a journaling one because you just get to go crazy. <laughs> That's so cool. I uh, have the interesting uh, morning ritual of saying to my husband, wow, I had the weirdest dream. And he'll look at me with a sort of straight face and say, and this is new in what way? <laughs> Because frequently what I'm journaling about is, wow, that was weird. <laughs> but those and, are fun to read back on too, I think. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what I'd want to dissect them, become I'm them. I'm the only one who really reads back 
through old journals a lot? Is that an Oh, no, I definitely do. And I don't. But we went full-time RVing for four years, which was a dream we'd had since we were going together almost 50 years ago. And when we went full-time RVing, you're going to think this is crazy, but I got rid of everything we owned that wouldn't fit in the RV. So I didn't have my old journals. They're only whatever's internal. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I was thinking about using the scanner to scan them, but I haven't done it. So. <laughs> But what what is what is something that you gain or you feel you gain from going back and reading them? I mean, I know for me, when I go back and read things, sometimes I wince because I'm like, oh, really was not very insightful at that point in my life. Or, there, I, can, yeah. or I see that I was wrestling with a problem in January and read again in December and I was still wrestling with the problem. And so sometimes I look back on them and I'm like, and but then other times I look back on them and go, good job, right? But what do you feel are insights you gain, Catherine? Um, well, to your point, yeah, sure. There are periods of time where I'm like, oh, I'll just skip those pages. <laughs> um, but there are other things where I'm like, wow, I forgot about that. That's a really cool thing. I'm glad I wrote it down so I can, I can go back and think about it again. Or the, the most fun for me is to go back and look at goals from different, because I did goals almost every year at New Year's or somewhere, uh, or my birthday, depending on how I felt. My birthday's in August, so it's not even close. But I would pick a time and I would do goals every year. And the goals, the goals that were the ones I really wanted haven't changed that much over time. The hilarious ones, you know, the yacht, that was just... <laughs> but, but the main goals haven't really changed that much since I was a teenager um, because I knew what I wanted. Um, now I've done all sorts of other things in the process to get there, but, uh, it, that's interesting to me. Uh, as Donna will attest, there were several years in which my journaling was all about what do I want to be when I grow up and why can I not figure it out? <laughs> You're not still doing that? <laughs> yeah, it's a little, the process is slightly more refined now. I have a better direction. At that point, I had zero idea. <laughs> Except that made you all the more eclectic and Sagittarian, and you got to explore so many things. It was and, that's, good. and that's putting the absolute best face on it you possibly could. <laughs> what about you, Sophia? What do you get from, how do you... Why do you choose to go back and look at them and what does it help you do? Um, I, you know, I find it really interesting. I do because I, I can go quite deep when I'm journaling because like I said, I actually have, a, I think I've told you, I've got a box upstairs in my attic that says, do not open, burn, uh, give to Jeannie Adams and burn. And it's all of my <laughs> stuff. So I really do feel that as long as you don't open that box that no one will ever read this stuff. So I, I can go very deep. And it's interesting to me that the biggest difference is the passage of time. So I can go back, uh, you know, 20 years, whatever, however many years and read things and look at it with a completely different perspective. And it's like, and it's amazing to me. I mean, I'm thinking of this one thing in particular this relationship I had with another person, not romantic. And I was just tearing my hair out over, you know, am I wrong? Are they wrong? What, you know, are we both wrong? Are we both right? <laughs> and reading it 20 years later, it's like reading a novel where we're all saying, you know, they're, they're complete idiots. Of course, I know exactly what to do, <laughs> right? So, but it helps you get a better understanding, I think, of yourself and your process and how you think and how your mind works. I mean, let's face it, the greatest gift that we give each other is trying to figure ourselves out, right? How we think and what are our blind spots, our prejudices, whatever. But I did want to say something off top, off that topic, because I don't want to forget. And I, I just pulled it out. One other thing you can do with journaling that I love is even if you don't like to journal, um, if you have a parent or a child, um, but mostly I think with parents. So like I have this one here and I gave this to my father about three years before he died. And I said, dad, for my Christmas present, 
I want you to write. I, I wrote headers on some of his history that he had told stories about. And I said, could you please write these stories down? Great. And he, he did, to his credit, he wrote maybe about, I probably put in maybe 30 prompts at the head of pages. And he probably did about 15. That's great. So That's it's wonderful a great idea. thing you can do to carry on to like, I'll give this book to my children and they'll have a firsthand account of something their grandfather did. That's of great. course, I did the same thing um, for another family member and they never wrote a thing, but it's, it's a wonderful gift that somebody can give you. So that's that, really I, a cool I idea. Wanna, I didn't want to forget will. that. One thing my sister and I did at one point was uh, similar. We created a document where um, my mother's name was Annie Lou, and we created a full document of Annie Lou isms. <laughs> and we got our we got our brothers involved, and we we tried to remember all of the things that she would say that were you know just odd things, and uh, just so we would remember them. So that's yeah, that's sort of on the same topic. That's a great idea, Sophia. It is. Uh, if you are interested in genealogy, please do that right now because your parents, <laughs> well, you, there's so many stories you won't remember. <laughs> yeah, and we can, we can do it ourselves for our children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, as sort of a last sort of a thing, how would you all each recommend someone get started? I'm going to ask you, Catherine, first. If somebody is sitting at home going, I have no idea what to do with myself in this current craziness, and I need to explore this idea of journaling. I want to get started. What should I do? What would your answer be, Catherine? Well, so it, it's an interesting question because there, somebody I was reading was actually recommended that pretty much everybody should start journaling this year because it's such an unusual year. And I think that just if you don't know what to do on the first page, just put an X and move to the second page and just start writing. Whatever you think of that morning. There's so much happening. You don't have to write a lot. You can write three words. I think it'll open it up and then you'll keep going. But just to just your thoughts that maybe you can share with your kids or grandkids someday about the current craziness of everything that's happening in this last year or this current, I mean, it's still going on. So I would start there. See what that's, you. that's so such smart advice because you're right we live in times that are unprecedented mm -hmm. and having as many records of that as possible is probably going to be a really good thing yep but what about you Sophia what would you say um I well I think we're living in an era where people like they they talk about the three things or the five things or the ten things so <laughs> My advice um, for somebody who's never journaled before to get an easy way out is to say, okay, every day I'm going to write down X number of things. And whether it's one thing, two, five, 10, whatever it is, and you can be creative on what they are. They can be literally your imagination is the limit. It can be five things I love to eat, five things. I, um, where I want to go, five things where I want to live, five types of animals I want to own. So just, uh, but giving it a structure by saying, I'm going to write X number of things. That would That's be cool. Thing. That's cool. Yeah. Five places I want to eat out at when I can. <laughs> yeah, when I can, right. <laughs> Donna, what would be some of your suggestions? Um, Mine would be a bit on the more start with a vague phrase like um, it doesn't matter to me whether and then see what happens or you know and I stole that one from David White or one of the one of the poets who um, got people started with prompts like that but some of the most famous ones that have now gone on for 10, 20 years, we all still pass around like, I don't care what you do for a living kind of thing, start it that way. Um, or taking one like, what really annoys me is, and then following with, and what I like about that is, or what I'm getting out of it is, or 
what I would do about it is if I could, um, I feel like there's so much emotion that we're having to deal with in other people's sadness and other people's fears, etc. Start with, if I were afraid of, or if, or I am afraid of, and just see where it takes you. Or I am so sad when I feel, where does it take you? And But keep writing it as part of like listening to your best friend, not, oh geez, I shouldn't be writing this or this is stupid, but this is my best friend talking. No matter what your relationship is with yourself, that's a relationship to come toward. And so you're writing what you feel, but as your friend listening. That's a cool idea too. Yeah, I mean, I know that for me, there have been days, especially when I was doing the morning pages, where I literally would start the morning pages thinking, I'm going to write these three pages, but I have no earthly idea what I'm writing about. Right. I'm I mean, like you said about not having had coffee yet. I'm grumpy as I'll get out. I don't, I don't really want to be sitting in this chair doing this, right. but I've committed to doing it. And you know, before you know it, you've got 12 pages of. Right. You get past the grumpies and go. Uh, this is what I'm thinking and feeling, and and you you suddenly have you know realized that you actually needed those pages to get something and off. Suppose you you know you start out with somebody that's a national or international figure. I can't stand that person because blah 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 blah. And then when you get down to it, it's like, and the reason it bothers me is that person thinks that they are so much better than everybody else, and I don't think I am. And you know when you go into this whole other part about how you feel that maybe you weren't even thinking about or looking at. I think one of the things too that's really important about journaling right now is we're all in a space where all of our coping mechanisms are in a lot of ways. I know one of the things I discovered in in the situation we're all in right now is that I didn't realize how many of my coping mechanisms were out there. Yes. And yes. one of the that's one of the reasons I thought it was really important to do this, uh, do this uh, session to, together was I think we're all having to deal with coping with a lot. Yes. Even if we're safe and we're healthy and everything's yeah. good, we're still dealing with a lot. Every time you turn on the news, every time you open your email. And yeah. so how do you deal? And right, I had right. to find new ways to deal which returned me to journaling mini pages. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. so I think a lot of people, this is something that people, if they, even if they've never done it before, can, can get started with easily. It's obviously very inexpensive. You just pick up a piece of paper, and even if it's computer paper out of your paper tray and start writing. And so calories and making bread. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who prefer the speed of doing it on a keyboard. Absolutely. And those who prefer, I mean, for journaling, I still prefer to write for all the other writing I do. I prefer the keyboard, but to each his or her own. Um, so whatever, you know, if somebody's having trouble, oh, it takes so long to do this, fine. Try doing it the other way. Mm -hmm. Get on the keyboard and do it. Well, that's probably a very important point is that there's really no wrong way to do it. I mean, exactly. you can do it with 16 different colored pens. You can keep a bullet yeah. journal. You can, you know, you can make it a collage. You can do whatever you want. But in, in these troubling times, maybe this is something that will help folks process some of the stuff that we're all going through. Right. Thank you all so much for being with me tonight. I would really like each of you to tell how people can find you on social media or on the web. And uh, let me start with you. Donna, how can we find you? Um, that would be HTTP, the usual, Donna Spring, like the season it's not, Gulick, G-U-L-I-C-K.com. Great. What about you, Sophia? I know we can find your books in, in bookstores <laughs> and online, but where can we find you on social media? Well, you can find, you can learn all about that just by going to my website, www.sophianash.com. Great. And does that have links to your social media? Yes. Excellent. Catherine, what about you? 
Um, I realized I need to add my social media to my website because I think I haven't updated it. But my, my website is www.katherine, K-A-T-H-R-Y-N Anderson, A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N.com. And I'm on Twitter at Kat Anders. Great. And y'all can find me at genieadams.com and on various social media, especially Twitter, where I spend way too much time. <laughs> you can also find me here on Continual, which is the con that never ends on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Discord. Thank you all so much for being with me tonight. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you, Jeannie. Good night. Thank you. Good night.